River City Ransom is the longest running beat up series in history, released for arcades in 1986. Neketsu Kohaku a game that started as an arena beat up, became a very prolific series, spawning a ton of games in a variety of genres. The latest entry in the series is actually a re release from the 2016 3DS exclusive that's finally being brought to consoles that you can actually purchase games for. But before I forget, hi, I am Savino, and this is The Flying Kick. If you follow this channel for some time, you already know that I really don't care for stories in beat'em up. I mean, it's cool to have some motivation to go out beating the living heck of bad guys, but it's really not the most important thing in this genre. Obviously, the guys at Ark don't feel the same way, and they are not afraid to put an RPG level story in their games. In Rival Showdown, the story is huge. Huge. I mean, man, there's a lot of text here. But the main plot is simple. A certain night, while strolling through the city, Kunio is attacked by two twin brothers who were transferred to Hei Hu Academy and now are targeting and taking down all the top delinquents from the schools in River City. The duo almost get the best of Kunio, who is saved by sirens in the distance. After that, Kunio learns about the intentions of the twins in that many Rick's girlfriend is also missing. From there, the story will open in a lot of separate events that are not always related to the main plot. You will find these events by looking at the map and look for exclamation marks, but most of them you will have to find by chance. The story is nice and well written, with that nice dose of cringe that is expected from a Kunio Kun game. While there's nothing fantastic here, it is enjoyable enough, even being a little too long for the game's sake. Depending on your actions, you can get one of the four endings that the game has to offer, but there's no way to track what you did and what you didn't in the game, unless you make notes. I mean, you can check that you completed event number 3 of that day, but you have no idea where it was or where to go next to find the fourth one. And getting the good ending will demand you to learn where every event is and complete them in a timely manner. Graphically, the game is interesting. The characters are your classic River City style with blocky 80-bit characters that I find very cool, and they have a lot of expressions and emotions in this game, which is awesome to see. Animation is pretty good, even if a little on the simpler side, but this is expected from the series. The facial expressions were what really caught my attention in this game. It was always a hallmark of the series, the exaggerated expressions, and here you can see every detail. You will see Kunio laughing, getting frustrated, whistling. It's amazing how expressive he and the other characters in this game are. There are some weird choices with NPCs that aren't as blocky as the main ones, but they fit in the back backgrounds if you, if you don't look too closely. Talking about the backgrounds, here is where a lot of people can turn their faces off or can really enjoy. They are a mix of low poly props and some realistic textures that, while I agree that it can create some really nice looking scenes, it's still a little weird to see. You have 2D cartoon characters and some very realistic grass in the backgrounds while low poly objects are spread around. It's a mix of style that, well, surely isn't for everybody, but one can't deny that it's unique. I mean, you know it is a River City game by just looking at one screenshot. Rival Showdown also has a nice day and night cycle that, while it's not in real time, makes for some nice scenes with some beautiful lighting. Some of the backgrounds can get particularly beautiful in certain conditions, especially when you can see River City sprawling at night before you. Now talking about the music, well... If you are familiar with the series, you know very well what to expect here. You can describe a River City game with only three characteristics. It's an open world, has blocky characters and chip tune. Lots of chip tones. The music is your classic River City affair with that familiar upbeat music that will bring hopefully a lot of memories for you. There is nothing new here if you're a fan of the series already, but everything sounds pretty good if you like the style of music that is. I mean, not every ear is used to this mechanical NES sound that River City brings to its music, but even if chip tones are not your thing, you can't deny these are some pretty well made tracks. Check it out.
same can be said about the sound effects, as is routine for the series by now, the game comes with all 8-bit sound effects that you can wish for. While they are very low quality, they are what you come to expect of the series and any change to this would grant the game some backlash. As usual, there are no voiceovers, so get ready to read a book while playing this game, because as I said minutes ago, there is a lot of story. Now let's take a look at what really matters here, gameplay and combat. Being a River City game, it's obvious you can expect some RPG mechanics like items to buy, gear to improve your stats, experience points and levels, and consumables, all of these inside a not too small open world. But here, things will be different. As I explained in the story bit, the schools of River City are being taken by some evil twins and you have three days until they reach Neketsu High. You are free to do whatever you want in these three days and you will have eight hours a day to do it, so you will have plenty of time to do whatever you want. Sure, eating, fighting, quick traveling and taking part in events will consume time more quickly, from a couple of minutes to an entire hour, but when you are out and about roaming the town, it's all in real time. In your free time, you can look for random events by walking up and down the city, or you can go straight to them by looking for an exclamation mark on the map. The thing is, most events won't be displayed on the map for you. You need to find them by walking around and bumping into people who have an exclamation mark over their heads, otherwise you will miss it. And yes, you can miss events, even important ones, if you are not at the right place at the right moment. This is in my opinion one of the weakest points of the game. I get it, the idea was to create a living and breathing world that gives the impression of things happening outside of your influence, but the thing is... You never see the consequences of such actions. You miss the event and that's it, you probably never know it ever took place. This creates a bigger problem for the game because it ends up a little boring to play. You will have to run up and down looking for the events not knowing what you will find or when. Exploration and random events are very cool, but those events are tied to your game progress and the extra content of the game which is a bit jarring. Here's the thing, in Rival Showdown you have only one difficult level to pick, the beginner one. While this is not uncommon to see, I find this a little annoying, but knowing River City, it's understandable because the most simple enemy would mow you down in later difficulty if you started on them. Usually you would expect to beat the game to open higher difficulties, but here beating the game is not enough. To open a new difficulty, you have to get the story complete question mark ending, or otherwise, you will have to play it on the same difficulty level all over again. The same is true for the extra content, Yamada and Rick's side story. I remember having to use a guide to unlock Yamada's story on my 3DS because I couldn't find for the life of me how to unlock it by myself. It's nice to have hidden content, easter eggs and things that aren't in plain sight, but here what's hidden It's a huge part of the experience, which is baffling to say the least. This was a design choice that even ARK did and carried over when releasing River City 3 Kingdoms, which has a very similar structure, but the events are way easier to find. When it comes to combat, the game is again not very different from modern River City outings. Here you start with a basic punch and kick, a grab, a jump with its respective attacks for a kick and punch, a block and a run button which is extremely helpful. Pressing block and grab will unleash a small special move that's very handy for when you first start your adventure. As you progress you will learn new moves by leveling up or you can buy them in the many bookstores around the map. These moves can be played as you like in 10 different slots and they go from better punches and kicks to special moves that will consume your special bar for a lot of damage. This is a cool thing in this series because you can mix and match the moves as you like, make the characters exactly how you want them, be fast and agile or slow and strong, it's up to you. And you can achieve that not only by getting better moves, but also better gear. You can equip shirts, pants, belts, shoes and so on to improve each individual stat from your character. Once you use more special, you can. Don't like kicks in River City? You can remove almost all of them. Do you like throwing people and things around? 
go for it. The flexibility you can have mixing gear and skills is pretty impressive in this game and you will be looking for each individual piece of book and clothing you can put your hands on. But sure, no matter how strong you think you are, there will be moments where you will hit a wall. Some places will have extremely strong enemies, so if you notice that all your best moves are taking only one point of health from your enemy, chances are you need to get the heck out of there and improve your character. By the way, the AI of this game is the same AI of all River City games, where enemies will pile up on you, throwing you to each and every corner, or they will run randomly across the screen like their asses on fire. At this point, I think it's unfair even to judge the AI here. It's the River City AI and that's what fans want in these games. The package comes with a mini fighting game called Double Dragon Duel, which is fun for a couple of matches, but it doesn't have the depth of a fighting game or the freedom of a beaten up, so it serves more like a curiosity. As part of the main game where you have to play a match, it works pretty well, but as its own mode, yeah, I can't complain it's here, but I wouldn't notice if it wasn't. There's also Yamada Story, which I didn't unlock here, but I did on my 3DS, and it's basically the same structure, but with a different story, character and moves. And there's the new Hick Story, this can be unlocked by having a save from Three Kingdoms, which I have on my Switch, and I'm playing the Steam version here, because of course I am. So I didn't unlock it here either. Look, this game is huge and running up and down can be extremely boring after a couple of hours. While the combat's fun if you enjoy this wacky River City style, the way the game is structured with lots of important things being missable to the point where you can even unlock another difficult for the main campaign makes it incredibly frustrating. I remember when I first beat this game on my 3DS and I got the bad ending, which I believe was the experience most had. How I was disappointed seeing that nothing, absolutely nothing worth noting was unlocked. I remember putting the game aside for quite some time before learning what I needed to do to unlock a single difficulty level. Sure, this is not a game to sit and beat in one go, trust me, I just did it and I can advise you to do the same. This is a game to take your time and explore it little by little, but yet this random nature of, well, everything in this game ended up not working as I believe the developers intended. So much so that the next game, Three Kindles, ditched this format in favor of a more traditional open world where important events are displayed on the map for you to take part in them. By the way, it's well known by now that this game is having some control problems on the Steam version. While I can say that I didn't face any problem, I am probably an outlier here, so I would advise you to wait for the update that ARK is working right now. Although for 25 bucks I would recommend you to wait anyway. Unless you are a huge fan of the franchise and you are eager to play it all over again on the big screen or even play it for the first time after falling in love with Three Kingdoms, but if you are just looking for the next beaten up to fill up your free time, I don't think this is the right game. While the game has a lot of positive things, this experience can be a very frustrating and really sometimes exhausting. Running up and down the town looking for exclamation marks, knowing that any important event missed could mean the run was lost, and the only way to fix it is reloading your last save game, it's not cool. The game is packed with content, having three stories and a mini fighting game, but getting most of the content can be extremely boring, and having to replay the same game with the same unskippable cutscenes, you can speed up the dialogues, but some of them are long, very, very long. Knowing Ark and the series, I would say that it won't be long until this game is on sale. Sure, Ark never lowers too much their prices, but any 30% off would make this game a better deal. Not that I really recommend it, because if you are looking for a great River Seat adventure, Three Kingdoms is way, way better than this one in every aspect and costs just a bit more. Bottom line, if you were a big fan of the series, you probably played this one already and know what's expecting you, but if you are looking for a fun beat up with weird looking characters straight from the NES, well, 
as I said, Three Kingdoms is way better than this. Or even River City Underground if the medieval team from the previous one puts you off. And that's it for the review guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you like what I do here and want to help me to keep spreading the beaten up word, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you want to support me directly to help me bring more and more videos, you can always leave a super chat or become a member of the channel. There will be soon some exclusive content just for them. I will be back pretty soon with a new recommendation for your Halloween night and an interesting demo that appeared this week on Steam. Other than that, I hope you all have an awesome day and remember, keep it up.